Hey guys, back to another YouTube video. Today it's going to be a showing off video. Now, I didn't go to any pawn shops or flea markets this week. There wasn't really much available. But me and my father went into Searcy for a while to go, because it's grown a lot since the last time we were there. And I was, we were running into local gun shops and pawn shops and stuff like that. Most of the pawn shops didn't have anything. Or they were way too overpriced. And the last place we stopped at was a local gun shop called Guns Plus. And I like the, what they have in stock. They don't really concentrate on modern firearms. They mainly concentrate on older firearms, which is what I like. Antique guns are my thing that I really like. Now, I'm not a guns person, per se. I mainly collect firearms if they have a piece of history connected to them, or they're just so unique that you just have to have them. And this is a very special video because this is now the first video where I've actually bought myself my own gun. Now, I've bought guns in the past, but not through a gun shop or a pawn shop. I did trades for some firearms. I bought a fire a shotgun back in Queen. That was a face-to-face -face deal. It wasn't no pawn shop or gun shop deal. And all the other guns I've ever gotten were normally either replicas or BB guns or pellet guns that were given to me. This is now technically the first, first gun that I've bought myself with my own money. And here she is. This is an 1850s double barrel shotgun. And this one is a very nice old bird and it has the classic open lever, which is what they started producing before they produced the side lock, which I'll show you on my coach gun. And this shotgun, when I first went to that gun shop, it was marked antique, which I thought was kind of funny. And they didn't mark it as nothing else as an antique and that's all they marked it as. And it wasn't in this good a shape when I got it. The hammer right here was seized up, it was left cocked, and I soaked it in oil and gently tapped it with a rubber mallet and I got it back forward. And the lever right here was bent, but I re-flattened it out with a rubber mallet and a wood block. And I gave it a nice rub down with some nice gun oil and cleaned all the loose rust off of it, yada yada. Anyway, when we first bought it, we did not know anything about it. We saw a few faint markings, but luckily my father, who knows quite a bit more about firearms than me, took the gun apart a little bit and we found more markings. Anyway, this gun dates all the way back to the 1850s, and this one was made in Belgium, France. And we were able to find all the information online, because turns out France, just like England, proofed their guns a lot. Basically what that means is their guns were inspected before they were mass produced and each inspector had a different mark. And the marks helped date when this gun was made. And on top of that, the lever right here, how the gun opened, well, let me show you real quick. This gun opens just like this, where you pull the lever this way and that's how it opens. And then of course, you pull it back and load the lever back. And that's how this, that's another indication this gun's very old, because when I compare it to my coach gun, this is my Denix coach gun, you can see that it has a top lever release, like that. This, this one, but, I mean, let me phrase that, that gun predates this design, and that shows how old it is. And back in those days, there was a lot of hunting and a lot of stuff like that going on, and... Like I said, it's a beautiful gun. This is a 12 gauge and it shoots black powder rounds, which of course I don't have. And this gun is so beat up, I don't think it's actually gonna fire again. It's in great shape for its age, but it has a lot of pitting around it. But for $150, I can't complain. It's in great shape for its age and it's still all original. Cause another thing me and my father noticed is it has all matching serial numbers. The barrel has a serial number. The receiver has a serial number, and the little lever here has a, has a serial number. All of them match. And my father told me all matching serial numbers is always a good thing to find, especially on these old guns. And another bonus is that the stock itself is in pr pristine shape for being that old. There's a minor crack right here, but that's it. The re and there's a piece missing right here, and that's about it. The rest of the stock is completely intact. Sadly, someone cut their name and cut their initial into it. And it still has the original butt plate still on it. So overall, I think it was a good buy. And for a gun this old, that's awesome to have. Something this old that's a lot of history dates to this. Because think, think of all the people that have probably shot this gun and used it over the years. 
Uh, such a nice piece of history. And I love the fact that it still has the original checkering still on it. Like I said, just a beautiful piece of gun history. And I didn't know any of this till I bought it and we did the research. And it goes to show, just because something is marked so cheap and it's so beat up, doesn't mean it's not worth getting. Because I've seen plenty of old guns that people find on storage units and stuff like that that turn out to be worth gold mine. It's a figure of speech. And this one also resembles the shotgun that Burt Gummer uses in Tremors number one because it has the open lever just like this gun. Now, that doesn't mean this is the same gun, but you get what I mean. But, and it has the original bead sight still on it, and most of the bluing is gone, but on this particular side, some of the bluing is actually still on here. And like I said, this gun will never fire again. This gun, I'm actually going to display in my collection just like this, along with my other double barrels, because I've got this one, my coach gun, and my other one that y'all have seen in the previous video. So this will not be considered the first gun I've ever bought myself from a gun shop. And for $150, it was so worth it. And the lady was very nice to me. She knows who I, who, who me and my father are, because we went into that pawn sh that gun shop before. And anyway, and she said since the gun was basically non-functional, she I, I didn't have to pay sales tax or nothing like that. And she said that I was happy to sell it to me. And for $150, I ain't complaining. So like I said, one last look over. And she's a beauty. It would have been better if this was an American-made gun, but I ain't being picky. But anyway, and just so those gun nut, those gun guys can say the same thing, the only difference between a coach gun and a regular size double barrel is this. The barrel is a lot longer than a coach gun. That's the only difference. And historically, coach guns, that was really where they came from. People that were cutting down the barrels and just make them into coach guns. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This baby will look good in my collection. And as always, stay sharp.